Hey, I'm Elise Bauman and I play Laura Hollis in the Carmilla movie. Hey, I'm Natasha Nogobenlis and I play Carmilla Karnstein in the Carmilla movie. There's a lot of fantastical elements to the film, you know, a lot of whimsical, magical elements to it. A lot of action and adventure, which we get to see on screen, which is a lot of fun. Um, but essentially at its core, it's about a, a group of friends navigating their way through life together. And they just happen to be doing so under pretty extreme magical circumstances. <laughs> well, Carmilla Karnstein is an interesting character because um, although she is a human in the film, she's not just any human, she used to be a vampire. So getting to play a character that is over 300 years old uh, is, is quite a challenge, but also quite a gift as an actor. Um, you know, Carmilla is always known for being a little bit broody. Um, she's a little bit philosophical. She's a little languid and, and stoic and serious. Um, but I do think that you get to see a little bit more of her lighter side in the film as well, because uh, now she gets to spend this wonderful human life with the woman she loves. My favorite part about playing Laura Hollis is her relentless determination to uncover the truth. And I think that Laura um, does a lot of that, a lot of, you know, what's going on, which I love. <laughs> She's in a relationship with Carmilla. The Carmilla movie uh, takes place five years after the series ended. So at the end of season three of the digital series, Carmilla turns back into a human. She's been a vampire for over 300 years. Um, but the mystery begins in the film when Carmilla starts to show signs of revamping. I think that uh, during the digital series, uh, she, she was described as someone who is capable of profound loneliness, even though she can also turn on the charm, um, just like that. And uh, I thought that was, that was really interesting. So it, it's nice to see her with, with a partner now and get to see that different side of her. Yeah, when we first meet Laura, uh, she's a freshman in college and she's very bright-eyed and bushy-tailed. And, uh, you know, she's had a very sheltered upbringing and has a very black and white view of the world. And as the series goes on, you know, she, um, she learns to, to navigate moral gray areas and, um, and recognize um, that things aren't so, so stark. But she's still very optimistic, I would say, throughout the whole series. Uh, and, and I think um, that remains a, a quality of hers in the, in the film, but she's, you know, she's been out of school for five years and her life's not really where she imagined it would be. And I think she's maybe, um, maybe gotten a little, a little cynical, a little, um, a little more hard on herself, I would say. You know, they, they start their relationship under very extreme circumstances, which, can be a really dangerous way to start a relationship, um, but it can also be a really fantastic way to start a relationship because, you know, they say who you are in crisis is who you really are as a person, and, and these girls have definitely been in crisis together <laughs> throughout the whole the whole series. I think they've got a really strong relationship in the film. Doesn't mean that it's not tested doesn't mean that it's not difficult, doesn't mean that there's still times where they struggle to communicate with each other, but um, I don't think I know any relationships where those things aren't present. <laughs> and um, I think that's what a grown-up relationship is, is, is not being perfect together, it's learning to go through the muck together, fail with each other, still come out respecting and loving each other. You know, I think one of the reasons why the show is so successful is that it, it has this spunk and this authenticity to it. And I think that we kept that within the film, within a bigger frame. You know, I think we kept the, the heart of the painting within a bigger canvas. Um, so I hope that that translates and I hope that, uh, hope that people love it. People can expect a lot of positive queer representation. 
they can expect a lot of excellent diversity, but I don't think that it's just a niche film and it's not just for LGBTQ plus audiences. I think that Carmilla has a little something for everyone, so if you're a fan of adventure or you're a fan of ghost stories or um, you know horror or period pieces or vampire shows, then there's something for you in the film. So I think that they should tell other friends. They should tell their families. They should bring their grandmothers. Um, and I, my hope for this film is that it, it does reach a larger audience. Um, I really think there is something for everyone in this film. And I think it's especially important for folks who are maybe not members of the LGBTQ community to watch it because I think that it might give people who are maybe formerly a little bit more closed-minded um, a, a, a better perspective on what it's like to be a member of that community because really it's not about their sexuality at all, it's about the mystery that they're solving and they're just regular young people, you know, dealing with extraordinary circumstances. Yes, there are ghosts and vampires, <laughs> um, but you know, if, if people can handle ghosts and vampires, then why can't they handle two lead characters being lesbians? <laughs> That's my question.